right. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm guessing this is somewhat apocryphal, but I gather that the first time the two of you met was at a photo shoot for this <laughs> play and that you were both in 18th century costumes and judging from the picture, I have here a mock-up of the Playbill cover. Within a few minutes, Aliyev, you were nuzzling her clavicle. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about that first encounter. Well, um, <clears throat> I, you know, it was, uh, it was a question of just um, uh, diving in, you know. I, I think, uh, it yeah, right. You know, it wasn't, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, it didn't make any sense to be sheepish about it. We sort of had to go for it. And we were, we were, you know, it was going to get a lot worse. <laughs> so you're both at the top of your game. You can presumably pick many of your projects. What, why did you each decide you wanted to do this particular play? <laughs> she's evil, she's delicious, she gets great lines, she wears great dresses, why would you not want to do that? Um, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a fantastic play, it's brilliantly written. The wonderful quality of the fact that there are these two essentially damaged, evil characters who somehow you end up loving as an audience. And, somehow it's, that makes it all the more tragic and you go away questioning, how did we ever like them in the first place? They're awful. And yet somehow it works. He's, just, he's a brilliant wordsmith, Christopher Hampton. So, you know, it all starts with the words, always. I think I, I pick people, not shows. And I knew Janet's work and very much wanted to work with her. Um, and after I met Josie, I was fairly convinced that it was going to be pretty fun getting these contemporary plays is there's something about this play that I said, oh, well, that's, it'll be nice to have some words after Ray Donovan, you know, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> and did you have a relationship with the story? Had either of you, uh, I assume you'd seen the film, had you seen productions of the play before? Yes, when I was first in London, I went to see the first production with them. Um, and Alan I thought, Rickman. yeah, Alan and Lindsay, and Lindsay Duncan played Martoy. And uh, she was uh, just magnificent. And I think I, I think I was at drama school and I went to see it three times. And I just remember standing up, like up there, you know, going like that. She was so brilliant. And so sort of trying to get rid of the ghost of Lindsay, as it were, because right. I remember her being so brilliant. That was quite a challenge. Let me stop there and ask you about that concept of ghosts, because of course this story has been told multiple times in multiple ways yeah. and there's now a kind of a history of great performers. How do you, do you study those performances? Do you avoid them? It's terrifying. That, that would be way too terrifying, I think, wouldn't you? I watch everything. You do? Everything. <laughs> Just so like what does that feel? Absolutely. <laughs> I watch everything. I watch everything often more than once and I try to figure out um, what they're doing. I try to steal. I try to take. It just doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't matter though, because it never, for me, it doesn't, it never works. You know? right. um, I've so ripped off so many people and nobody knows. You know? <laughs> I like the continuum. Thousands of actors have done this role before you and thousands will do it after you. So what's your contribution to the continuum? That for me is, a, is an exciting thing about theater, and particularly old plays. And, the, and the, this was one of those plays that I've seen a, a few times and, and read a bunch of times and kind of thought, there's an opening here for us. Mm. There's an opening here for, for Janet and I to do something that I haven't seen yet or that hasn't occurred. How do you want your Valmont to be remembered? At its best, you have a gut an instinct about something, you get with somebody else who's good at instincts and impulses, you bat it around and it becomes a third thing. And that's sort of where we are now. It's beginning to become a third thing. Yeah. I had an idea, Janet had an idea, they had intercourse, and the baby's just starting to walk. <laughs> <laughs> that was really crass. <laughs> so, Let's back all the way up. I want to ask each of you why you're actors. Why are you in this business? I'll start with you. <laughs> uh, uh, ah. 
I don't know. Um, you know, uh, give me another chance. I, I'll go to medical school. I, I, this was, I, this, was uh, this was sort of I. It was the most engaged I'd ever felt. But I, I, I think there is probably a, a, a common ground many actors have, which is, which is a, a diversity or a complicated upbringing. Um, and I, I think for me early on, I felt alienated. And uh, there was something about theater that helped me connect that helped me, that was good scripts, where I could be as intelligent as Hamlet, I could be as charming as Valmont, I could be all of these things that I wasn't so sure how to do in my regular life. Also, the first time I felt a real connection to an audience, and I don't mean just appreciation or laughter, but the sense that you are understood and you are connected and feel related. It was a remarkable feeling, and I, I think that, that I got addicted to that. And then, of course, you know, I, I got into television and films and found out you could make a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> so, so much for medical school. Yeah. <clears throat> so much for medical school. What about you? I, I read that, um, that when you went to acting school, you had never appeared on a stage before. No, it's true. I sold coffees in my local theatre because that's where the boys' school came to, you know, so you could eye up all the boys. And, uh, and the, of course, the actors would come and get their tea and coffee and they would let me in. And I remember going into a theatre and I, I'll never forget it. And I just thought, this is where I belong. And I'm a very private person. I'm not a very demonstrative person in my real life. Um, my nickname used to be Calm Janet. Everyone's always afraid that I'm going to lose my temper, and I never do. And, <laughs> and, um, uh, <laughs> and yet, in, in, you know, in real life, if I'm really upset or angry about something, I'll, I'll sort of you know, have a think about it. And my husband's here somewhere, he's sitting there going like this. And um, he'll, you know, I'll go, and then I'll go away for a day or so, and then I'll come back and go, yeah, but you know, I was actually really rather cross about that yesterday. And can we talk about that? And, da -da. and then when I'm on stage, I just go, Bleh! And it's completely all right. And I find it incredibly easy to do that on stage. And I always have. I don't know. It's just, I find that emotional kind of vomit incredibly, <laughs> incredibly easy on a stage. I've never found it difficult. But I've always had a sense of, this is my house. You're more than welcome to watch. I really hope you enjoy it. But ultimately, it's my party and you're invited. As opposed to, oh shit, this is their party. <laughs> I'm so terrified I'm going to behave like a bad guest. Do you know what I mean by that? Well, I had the opposite experience because <laughs> the first big play that I ever did was at, uh, on the stage. I mean, I'd done little plays. I did plays in high school and things like that. But the first time I had a paying audience, and it was a big deal, and I had a big role, was at the Yale Rep. And uh, I was so nervous that I, I slept in the theater the night before so I could get myself comfortable with the space, knowing what was mine and what was theirs. And then they came in, and I remember being so terrified. I don't like crowds. I get uncomfortable. And it, here was this, you know, I was now at a crowd that I had a responsibility towards because they were paying. And it made me really uncomfortable. And then it was in that very show that I realized the contract between the audience and the actor, which is that we really want you to do well. Yeah, yeah. That's what they bring into the theater. They're dying for you to do well. So really, you know, get on with it. You know, <laughs> this audience looks pretty funny. They do. You never know, though. You never know. <laughs> <laughs>